Hi, I'm Jen Harmon. I'm the Director of Research and Policy at CONCAN, the Connecticut Coalition for Achievement Now. Um, I'm delighted to be here on behalf of Alex and CONCAN to present Representative Tony Huang with our inaugural 2010 Tip of the Cap Award. Along with the other recipients, Representative Huang has demonstrated his commitment to ensuring great public schools for every Connecticut child. As a freshman representative, he demonstrated an impressive work ethic and a dedication to learning all there is to know about the state of education in Connecticut and what can be done to improve it. During the past legislative session, he led education reforms from within the rank and file, spoke out for what's right for Connecticut children, and prioritized public school reform. Representative Wong helped pass a race to the top bill that represented a breakthrough for education in Connecticut. For the first time, every district in the state is required to evaluate teachers based in part on their students' achievement. There will be a data system that links students to their teachers and teachers to their training programs. There will be pathways for our most talented teachers to become school principals. There will be no caps on the number of seats in high-performing public charter schools. Representative Huang stood out as the only member of the House Minority Caucus to vote in favor of the Race to the Top bill's content when it was included as an amendment to another bill. His dedication and commitment to improving outcomes for students permeated all of his work in the General Assembly, especially on the Education Committee. I am pleased, on behalf of CONCAN, to congratulate Representative Wong on your leadership, vision, and courage with the tip of our proverbial graduation cap. CONCAN is inspired by the work that you've done and to help secure an excellent publication for, excuse me, to secure an excellent public education for all of Connecticut's children. Thanks very much and congratulations. Good morning and thank you, Jen, for this tremendous honor. It is a privilege to be a state representative and work on behalf of the people of Connecticut, particularly the children of our state. As an immigrant that came to America to pursue the dream of economic self-determination, education stood out as the main catalyst to accomplish that dream. Many obstacles stood in my way to achieve educational success. Living in a federal housing project when we first moved in, parents who didn't speak beyond conversational English, latchkey upbringing with both parents working, low income status, linguistic development with English as a second language. So many of these conditions still exist for children throughout Connecticut, and their academic success has fallen short of expectations. Our education achievement gap based on income status is the widest in the country. How was it different for me? And how can we do better for the kids of Connecticut? Allow me to share my personal perspective on these issues. I was able to succeed academically and live the American dream because I had so many teachers and administrators that cared, challenged, and motivated me towards success. That combined with my parents' endless encouragement and their demonstration of selfless sacrifice. Some examples of that, of educators and parents making a difference in my life, are something that I'd like to share with you. First, coming to America and living in a federal housing project with my parents working, with my father working as a chef, he did something quite remarkable. He invited the entire elementary school into the federal housing project and served them a buffet meal that could last a whole year. It, it's still the talk of the town in, in, in the elementary school that we were part of. And with the only caveat, my dad stood up after the meal and said, I hope you enjoy your meal and we're grateful to be in America. And I ask of one thing of all of you, I want you to challenge I want you to push my children to live the American dream. From that moment forward, we moved from remedial English and, and two grades back, and we were given extra attention, extra work, and I'm happy to say that within a year, we were able to come up par with the grade level that we were supposed to be in. Not a bad improvement from jumping into this country with no language skills at all. What my father demonstrated in doing that was he had tenacity, he had belief in the American dream, and he believed in self-determination. He had the tenacity to, 
to bring people into a federal housing project and invite them for a meal to say, this is what I want for my children. That is a lesson that I've always kept. Um, secondly, as a proud graduate of the Federal Head Start Education Program, I attended weekend programs by taking three-hour bus trips for college preparation horse, coursework and counseling. And despite my strongest objections, my parents insisted that I forsake my summer vacations during my sophomore and junior year to, to join the Summer Head Start program. Thinking back, those summer sessions were absolutely invaluable to my educational success. We made that sacrifice even though I didn't want to, but the partnership between parents and educators in insisting that we build the building blocks to our educational success is something that we as legislatures need to put in place for the children of our state to succeed. Finally, the passion and commitment in pursuing academic success that was instilled in me from all my past experiences, from all the past educators and administrators, and constantly reminded by my parents, all of it was needed as I applied to college. When I applied to Cornell, I was very fortunate to have met an admissions officer who believed in my potential and reminded me of one thing, that if upon admissions and graduation, that I strive to work and help others achieve the American dream of educational success. I've never forgotten that request. That is a foundation of what drives me in public service. I believe that every child has the right to fulfill their academic potential and achieve economic self-determination. And I simply believe that we as legislatures have a responsibility to create a setting that will nurture and motivate them toward that success. We're here at Fairfield University as one of the original Head Start education programs in the country. It has remained committed to the mission of providing opportunities for disadvantaged, low-income students to pursue academic success. I would like to thank Father Van Arks for his generous use of this wonderful facility and his commitment to the Connecticut Independent College Student Grant Scholarship Program, better known as CICS, and allow me to introduce to you Father Van Arks to speak a few moments about the program and to show the wonderful success stories that these students have produced, this program is produced in students. So Father Van Arks, please come on up. Thank you so much, uh, Tony. On behalf of the Fairfield University community, I want to congratulate you on receiving the first annual Tip of the Cap Award from CONCAN, the Educational Advocacy Organization. As we heard earlier, the award recognizes Connecticut state legislators for their leadership, vision, and courage in the pursuit of great schools for every Connecticut child. And I echo the acknowledgement of Representative Wang's tireless efforts in this endeavor and appreciate his work in Hartford on behalf of our state students. I want to use this occasion to extend a special thank you to Tony for his advocacy on behalf of the Connecticut Independent College Students Grant Program that provides need-based aid to Connecticut undergraduates attending Connecticut's independent colleges. These grants are critical for our state's students and the funds that are allocated significantly increase access to college. For many of these students, it is the only way that they can afford to enroll. Last year, KICS grants helped 5,816 state residents to attend Connecticut independent colleges or universities of their choice with an average grant of just over $4,000. To help you better understand how important this funding is, we're going to introduce you to two students who are benefactors of this assistance and who share with you the difference it made for them. So it gives me great pleasure at this point to bring to the podium Marina Barbosa 
and Lisa Frazier. Good morning, everyone. I'm Marina Barbosa, and um, I'm a senior at Fairfield University, majoring in accounting and international business. Um, for me, just being able to say that I attend the university is something that is a great achievement for me and something I'm very proud of because just back five years ago, um, being in a um, college what is, wasn't a guarantee because my parents wasn't going to have the money to afford for um, uh, higher education. Money comes and goes. Money is not a guarantee, but knowledge, no one can take that away from you. So I'm very fortunate to be given this opportunity. Thank you. Uh, my name is Lisa Frazier. I am a certificate student for secondary education and uh, also a major in English. Um, I've always known that I wanted to be a teacher ever since I was even in elementary school. When it came time to, to choose a place to go to, I mean, I looked at the people around me. I went to Trumbull High School and almost all of my English teachers were incidentally Fairfield alumni. So I knew exactly where I wanted to go. I wanted to go to Fairfield University. I got in and then the financials sort of started to spring up and uh, and I just owe a lot to the efforts of Representative Huang and all the all the efforts with these scholarships and uh, I really look forward to with the degree that they helped to fund and the certificate they helped to allow me to achieve um, really continue the efforts of improving education in Connecticut and uh, continuing the legacy of improving our school systems and our in the state of the education here in Connecticut. Thank you. Um, this is simply the beginning. Um, there is so much more that needs to be done. And I recognize that as a state we are experiencing some tremendous economic difficulties. But truly, you cannot put a price on a child's education. You cannot put a price on the opportunity for a child to have a future, to give back to our community. I thank everybody for being here, but I encourage people to stay active, to stay engaged, and truly recognize that this is a battle worth winning, but it truly will be a battle and a hard battle ahead.